Rather than focus on, we've got to have 24 chapters because that gives us two 12-week semesters, we actually need to rethink this and go back, get outside of the educational framework to start from a pedagogical perspective to say, what's going to work the best here? So last week I published a video explaining the two reasons why the Grammar Translate method is really not as effective today as it could be. And if you've missed that video, go back and take a look at it. In this video, I want to sort of build on that and talk about what can we do to fix it. Hi, I'm Daryl from Biblical Mastery Academy, here to help you with the tools, habits, and systems to master the Greek of the New Testament. If you're interested in learning Greek, and you really want to be able to read and study the New Testament in the original languages, and maybe the Septuagint, and perhaps the Apostolic Fathers too, then go to bma.to slash get started. We'd love to ex explain to you how we do things, how we teach, and how we could be a blessing and a benefit to you as you seek to know the Word of God in the original languages. Now last week, like I mentioned, I published a video explaining the two key problems that I think are a problem today with the Grammar Translate method. Now, I'm not saying that these are the only two problems, and it was fascinating to read all your comments, and certainly one of the things that really stood out is there are so many of you who have been through a Grammar Translate method approach and have suffered at its hands. And in fact, some people even related stories of other people who have had bad experience and have said never again. Well, one of the things to bear in mind is just because we've had these bad experiences doesn't mean that it's actually the method that's the problem. And my argument here is that in many cases, it's actually the implementation of that method that is the problem. And particularly the two issues that I highlighted last week were first of all, the Grammar Translate method has not adapted well to the fact that we no longer actually teach grammar in schools, and which means that when we come to actually learn using a Grammar Translate method, we no longer have the prerequisites to actually be able to relate to what's going on. So that's one part of it, and I think grammars need to do a better job of that, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. The other problem, and I think perhaps this may be even a bigger problem in some ways, because I think grammars have had a go at that first problem, but this one is a bigger one, and that is that seminaries skip the idea of reading Greek and focus really just on exegeting the text. Now, again, exegeting the text is critical, but if you want people to know and love the Bible in the original language, they've got to be able to read it in the original language. You can't assume that just because they love it in English, they're going to love studying it in Greek, though they can't read it in Greek, and you really need to be able to read it to get the benefit of it, to see the, the vividness there, to see the detail that's there, to see and understand the way the language works, to really be able to appreciate what you're actually studying. So those are the two key problems, and I think as I reflect on the comments that you all left, thank you for leaving those comments, those are two key things that I think are still a core part of the problem, and so the implementation of the Grammar Translate method is fundamentally the biggest problem that we face today. Now, because of all these experiences, I want to take just a moment to really argue why I think the Grammar Translate method is still an appropriate way of learning the languages even in the 21st century. The first reason is that right from the very beginning, the very early days of the whole approach to using grammar to teach language, the whole approach to that, the reason for it was to teach people a body of literature, to be able to read that literature, not to study it, although that would come, but really to read that literature. And I think this is really the strength of the Grammar Translate method. The Grammar Translate method is designed to get you into a specific corpus of text in the most rapid manner possible. And I think it can do this really well. While every approach to Grammar Translate is a little bit different, we, in our approach, we want to get you into the text of the New Testament within the first week to week and a half if we can. So we're going to try and work on well, how do we get you through those first lessons so we can give you some simple Greek right from the New Testament. That means we want to give you some basic language construction that we find in the New Testament and then give you some basic texts from the New Testament that use that construction. And then we can build on that. So the way we do this then is we start with those basic constructions and we build on them just bit by bit. So eventually you're actually able to read everything in the New Testament without having to depend on any tools whatsoever. So the Grammar Translate method then has the advantage of getting you into the text of the New Testament in a very rapid manner. And that's not to say that 
other approaches won't do that. But I think the grammar translate method is really designed to do that. And that leads me to the second point, and that is that we don't waste time with the grammar translate method learning things that you are not going to need for that task of reading that particular body of literature. And, and again, I'm not trying to argue against natural language approaches here. If you don't like the grammar translate method and you're so opposed to it that you just can't even bring yourself to ever touch it again, well, go use a, grammar, a, a natural language approach to that and, and good luck to you. There's no problem with that in my mind whatsoever, nor am I arguing that you should use the grammar translate method and never use a natural language approach or input method at all. That's not my point. The point is that the grammar translate method is appropriate for its purpose, and that purpose is reading and studying that body of literature that you're interested in reading and studying. And for that reason, you're not going to spend any time during the grammar translate method using skills and learning words that you're not going to use in your translation. Now, again, I've got to take a step back here for a moment because I recognize that many of you will say, well, learning all these charts and paradigms and so on will actually, that's stuff that you're not going to know. You never have to learn that stuff to learn the actual language. And I, I, I get that, I get that. We'll come back to that in a moment. But the point I'm really getting at here is that something like a natural language approach, where you're actually learning to converse in the language, requires that you learn active and passive skills. Now again, I'm not against learning active skills, but you don't need those active skills to be able to read the text. You just need the passive skills to be able to read the text, and same with the study of the text. And I know there's arguments about people saying if you don't know the active skills, you don't know the passive skills either. And maybe, maybe not, but the reality is that we're interested in here in reading and studying the New Testament in the original language, and I would argue that if you can do that with passive skills, you're way ahead of anybody who's doing it in the translation. And that's where we're trying to go here. Now, again, if the active approach works for you and you love developing those active skills, well, go to it. I'm not arguing against that. And even if you're learning using a grammar translate method, there's nothing wrong with adding additional work that you're going to do to give you those active language skills as well. That's perfectly adequate, and that will probably help you with your passive skills too. So I'm not against that. I'm just saying that it's wrong to say that just because you don't have the active skills doesn't mean you can't have the passive skills or don't have the passive skills either. The Grammar Translate method is focused on those passive reading skills because it wants you to be able to read that body of literature in as quick a manner as possible. The benefit of all of this is that a Grammar Translate method appropriately built and delivered should be able to get you into that corpus of text in a timely manner and give you the skills to both read the text and study the text. So that's why I think the Grammar Translate method still has a place today. So how do we then rehabilitate the Grammar Translate method so that it is actually more effective today? I have some ideas around this, and again, I know not everyone's gonna agree with me on this, and that's fine. I'm not here to try and convert everybody or teach everybody for that matter either. My focus is really to help those people who have uh, a desire to be able to read and study the original languages of the Bible so that they can get into biblical studies and studying the Bible and going deeper in their knowledge and understanding of the Word of God in a quicker and more effective manner. Again, if you're interested in going to Greece and speaking the language, this is not, I'm not really talking about those sorts of skills, okay? This is for those who really want to study the Bible in the original language and use those technical you know, language-oriented commentaries and resources and so on. So the first thing I think is letting us down in terms of the Grammar Translate method actually is related to the way the school system, the educational system is built. If you look at most of the grammars out there today, they're mostly built around the structure of a seminary. Now, I can see the practical requirement to do so. You can't very well teach the language with it and, and sort of have it so that you, you do 90% of the work in the in the semester and then the last 10% after the semester finishes. You've got to actually try and fit everything into whatever time constraints you have. But then the problem with this is of course that now you're actually being driven by the educational framework rather than actually by the pedagogical requirements that the language actually places before you. And so I think it's a really important thing for us to take a step back from the educational framework to say, well, what actually needs to take place? What kind of flexibility do we need to build into our courses? Rather than just building a, a grammar built around two 12-week semesters, for instance, what do we need to do to make this easier? Maybe we need more chapters where we can flex and move a little bit with these different requirements. And I think this is really what's necessary for us to do uh, for the current climate. Rather than focus on, we've got to have 24 chapters because that gives us two 12-week semesters, we actually need to rethink this and go back, get outside of the educational framework to start from a pedagogical perspective to say, 
What's gonna work the best here? The second thing we need to do is we need to reduce the cognitive requirements of the Grammar Translate method, particularly during the early phases of learning the language. Now, I understand that there's no way around giving people some challenging things right out of the gate, but there are some grammars where in the first week after you've learned the alphabet, the first thing you're gonna do, the next lesson is gonna introduce you to the nominative, the accusative, the dative, and the and the and the genitive all in one week. And then you're gonna get singular and plural, and you're gonna get masculine and feminine and neuter all in one week. That's just way too much. And I think we need to make this a lot easier. Now, there's been some grammars that have done some great work here, I think, in trying to simplify this, but there's more we need to do to actually make this easier. What we need to do with people who are just starting out in the language is to give them quick wins without this massive cognitive load. Allow them to be able to read as much as possible in as short a time as possible so that they're actually able to benefit from what they're learning without being overloaded with charts and graphs and all these kinds of things. Now, of course, we're gonna need those to teach people, but we shouldn't have to, shouldn't be requiring people to memorize these and write them out in the first few weeks. So we need to reduce the cognitive load, particularly during these early stages and provide a lot of wins early on so that people can feel the success and the joy of actually getting into the text without the overloading cognitive burden uh, that's often placed on them. And I think most people who write a grammar understand this, but it's just a struggle of actually having to do this. There's this difficult balance here that's hard to strike. Third thing we need to do is we need to relate it to what students already know really, really well. And particularly what I'm thinking of here is grammar. Students come into the language, learning Greek for instance, without really knowing what grammar is and terms related to grammar. And some grammars do a really good job of explaining some of these things, but others not so much. For instance, I was looking at the grammar just before recording this video, which introduced the concept of nouns. And when it talked about nouns, it said a noun is a, and talked about what a noun was. And then it told you this is helpful. And then you got inflected language, and it talks about how that this helps you to understand the difference between a subject and an object but it didn't explain what a subject and an object was. And that's the kind of problem that I'm getting at. We assume that they might know these terms, but not these terms. And the reality is we need to explain all those terms and assume nothing because most people don't. They know how their language works and we need to start with that and then say, well, this is what this looks like in Greek. So we need to take what students already know and build on that bit by bit. And then as we teach them new things, use that as a building block to build a little bit more. Now, it sounds really obvious when we state it like that, but it's really easy to overlook things that a student needs to know that we assume they do know when they actually just don't. I think probably it's more likely that a student knows what a noun is than a student knows what a subject and an object is. And so to define a noun but not a subject and an object, I think is a critical error. The fourth thing I think we need to do with the Grammar Translate method to make it a little bit easier is to prioritize the concepts in the language based on the way the language works rather than merely on the way we think it should work in English or the way we think English works. Now obviously going back to my previous point this means starting with what students already know providing a new concept and then using that new concept to provide more concepts and build out block by block and again I think most grammars are trying to do this so I'm not trying to argue that they're not doing this. But I think that sometimes we make assumptions about the way the language works based on what people know about English. And one of the arguments I have here in this one is around things like the present tense. Because we use the present tense in English so much, we think to start there with our students. And reality is that's not how the Greek language works. And so I think it's better for us to go back and start with say, the aorist verb and explain how the aorist work, even though it's a little bit more complicated because there are so many more aorist verbs in the New Testament and present tense verbs and the aorist verbs in the present tense are being used in a pretty consistent kind of way. And I think if we understand how the language works and teach it that way, it's gonna make it easier for students over the long term. So in other words, let's take the concepts that occur the most often in the New Testament, in New Testament Greek, and then teach those in that order as best we can and build out the less frequent things on top of that. Now again, there's balancing work to be done here because it's not just that simple. For instance, participles often occur quite regularly, but because they incorporate so many different features of the grammar, uh, it's often very hard to introduce those really early on. So there is some compromising here to do, but I'm just saying that 
rather than just working with the way English works and then trying to relate that to Greek, let's start with how Greek works and relate that to English instead. And maybe I'm overstating the case there, but I think that there's a little bit of work that we can still do there in the grammar translate method world in order to make this a little bit easier for students by working with the language based on the way the language works rather than the way the student works. And again, this isn't an easy thing to solve. Finally, the last thing I think we can do to improve the grammar translate method is to focus much more on reading. A number of you said in the comments uh, in the last video that indeed you've got to keep people reading. Input is critical and I agree with that. And yes, there's possibly more room to do more work with reading in those early stages. So that is a challenge and I don't assume that I have got it all sorted on any of these points, let alone this one. However, one of the problems that I mentioned in the last video with uh, the grammar translate method is that we switch to exegesis far too quickly and don't spend enough time reading the text, using those skills you've just spent all that time developing and even using them even as you are developing those skills as well. So there's a lot more work we can do here and there's some work being done on this and I think there's still a lot of work for, for us to continue to do as we revise our grammars and so on. Because at the end of the day, Studying the text, the exegetical process, is an outworking, an overflow, if you like, of the curiosity that naturally kicks in as we read the text ourselves. What is this preposition doing here? Or how is this case working? Or why is this participle like this? Or whatever it happens to be. So those challenges with the language naturally cause us to go deeper and start to study these things and think about the theological implications without us even having to teach exegesis. So exegesis is the overflow of good reading. So those are some of the things I think we can do to improve the Grammar Translate method. Now maybe you've got some other ideas, and if so, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Let us know other ideas you have for how we can improve the Grammar Translate method. I'd love to hear from you there. Also, if you have got this far in this video, leave a sandwich emoji in the comments as well. Just a little bit of fun just to throw in there. And if you are interested in learning Greek, go to bma.to slash get started. We'd love to sort of walk you through how we do things and also encourage you to join us in our membership as well. Thanks so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery of the Greek New Testament. We'll see you there.